Okay, we're live. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties this morning connecting to Facebook to go live, but we are live. Um, <laughs> I feel uh, I'm trying to get myself organized here. My name is Tim Van Milligan. This is Roxim Live. Um, I've got a computer monitor over here. Um, so if you are seeing this, say hello. I see that Stu McNabb is here. So good morning, Stu. Uh, this is, as I said, Roxim Live. I don't have any agenda today except for to answer your Roxim questions. I don't have any holdovers from last week. So go ahead and put in your first question for me to answer about Roxim, and I'll, I'll get to that. Uh, this is our 19th episode. Um, we are giving away a, another coupon, or another, not coupon, a sticker. It's uh, the Roxim Live sticker right here. Uh, there's a coupon code down there on the bottom of the screen. Um, if you come to our website and you place an order for $10 or more, you will get this free sticker. Um, and it has 19th, because this is the 19th episode. We are also going to give away today, every week we give away a poster. Um, the poster this week is a one-of-a-kind poster. Let's see, where's this best shown? Over here. This is, let me get this tilted down because it's probably in the way. This is the Hermes uh, rocket. Um, this is not going to be a kit from Apogee, but it is a plan. This is a semi-scale model of the Hermes II, which was launched out of White Sands, New Mexico in the 1940s, right after World War II. Um, this was a, what they did was they took a V2 rocket and they put a ramjet engine on top. And there, it was actually two wings. There was a, a, the big winger here and then there was a small canard. We took the small canard off of it. So it's kind of semi-scale, but that was a, the, inside the big wing was a ramjet and that they wanted to test the ramjet to go to Mach 3. Um, but unfortunately they only launched at one time and the first launch went, uh, it went the wrong direction. It was supposed to go north and it actually went south and landed in New Mex uh, in Mexico, uh, landed in a cemetery. Um, so I have signed it down here on the bottom. This is one of a kind. Um, this is going to be a plan, like I said, in our next newsletter, which comes out on Tuesday of next week, which is the last week of May 2021. Um, and so that is going to be on the cover of the issue. Uh, so that's why we made it a poster because we, we, you know, we already had to make the cover of the newsletter. So we said, let's just turn it into a poster. So that's where that comes from. Um, okay, so we want to get into Roxham since we had a delay of just getting on board. Uh, we have uh, Stu McNabb, Stephen Alter, Jay Edmondson, and Chris Schaefer. Uh, good morning, everybody. Go ahead and type your questions because I don't have any agenda. Uh, I don't know what you guys want to hear about Roxham, so the show is in your hands, so make it a good one. Give me some good, hard questions. Uh, if you um, are new to Roxim, if you're watching this on YouTube, we archive it on our website. Um, so if you go to our website, and here's what it looks like, the Apogee website. Um, and if you go to How To and Guides, and you go to Software in the menu here, and then go to Roxim Live Training, this is where we archive all the past episodes. So you can see we archived episode 18, which was on May 24, 2021. And it gives you the link to YouTube so you can uh, find it. Uh, and then it lists all the topics we talked about and also the timestamps for YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you're interested in a particular topic, you can just hit that timestamp and get to it right away. And you don't have to watch the whole hour long episode. You can just watch, you know, the part that's important to you. Um, OK, 
Okay, we got our first question. Stu McNabb says, could you briefly discuss putting decals on a design? So like on this rocket right here, we have decals on the rocket and we wanna make the rocket pretty. Um, so how do you go about putting decals on a design? So let me open up Roxim here. And so we have a design already loaded here. This is a two-stage rocket and we wanna put a decal on it. So the first thing is you have to have a decal. Um, yes, so you have to have artwork. So what kind of artwork can you put on your rocket? So it can be anything that either a JPEG or a PNG format. Um, we did a newsletter on this specific topic a long time ago. Let me see if I can find it here so you can uh, get to it. So you go to, so what I did is I went to how to and guides and then I went to the peak of flight newsletter right here. And then I went all newsletters and this is going to bring up all the newsletters we've ever did. And you can see we're on issue 547 right now. 548 is going to be the next one. And that, that's the one that has the Hermes plan in it. Um, and if you, uh, on your keyboard, if you do a control F or on the Macintosh, it's command F you'll get a search bar up here in the top. And this searches specifically on this page. Um, so I'm gonna type in the word decal. And, and it has 12 matches. So I'm gonna sort through them, see if I can find it. And it, here it is, decal uh, issue number 123. Um, there might've been two ones here. I just want to make sure I got the one. Okay, and then issue number 211. So 211 is newer than 123, so that's the one I'm going to go to. And this is how to add decal graphics to Roxim files. Okay, yeah, so this explains it in detail. Um, so Stu, this is the article I want to point you to. So, but first we're gonna need a, a image with a decal on it. So this is kind of like if you were to take a wrap, a piece of paper and wrap it completely around the rocket, um, what would you put on that decal to get it uh, to lay on the rocket? So um, I have to create something. So I'm gonna go and open um, a design program. I use Adobe Illustrator. You can use anything. You can use Paint Shop in, on Windows. You can use um, Inkscape. You can use any graphics program. You can download an image from the internet as long as it's a PNG or a JPEG. Um, so here I have Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to create something here real quick. Um, so I'm just going to create a new design and I'm going to open up a, come on, open that up. Okay, so it opens up a, a brand new sheet of paper and I'm going to make a rectangle. Now this is going to kind of be my wrap that goes completely around the rocket. Uh, let me find out what my diameter of the rocket is. So let me go back here to Roxim. So here's my tube on the rocket. So I'm going to go up to design components um, and I want to go to this rear body tube right here. And what I'm looking for is the diameter. So the outside diameter is 0 0.540. So when I make my wrap, I have to, the wrap has to go completely around the circumference of the rocket. So to find the circumference of a circle, because this is a circle, we multiply the diameter times pi, which is 3.14. So I'm going to bring up a little calculator here. So I'm going to type in 3.14 times 0.544, which was the diameter of the tube. And it gets a, a result of 1.708 inches. So I'll just move that out of the way. So I'm going to go to my transform box here, and it's in pipe. Uh, what was that number? Ah, 
1.708, I think it was 1.708. So I'm going to type here my width, 1.708 inches. And now my, my height of that tube, and let me go back to Roxanne. The length of the tube is 8.5 inches. So I'm going to go back here to transform. And this is going to be 8.5 inches. Hit tab. So this is the wrap. Now it's just a matter of putting an image on that wrap. So I'm just going to put a, some text on there. Let me, uh, let me see if I got something here that I can use that's Oh, uh, I got the decal from uh, image number 18 from the last time. So let me put that on there. So let me see if I can uh, import. No. Let me, uh, I know what I have to do. Open my downloads. I'm looking for that decal. Where did it go? Where did it go? Now, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, I'm just going to use text. So I'm going to create a, oops, create a box here, and I'm just going to say Apogee decal. Let me get rid of this other one up here. So this one, you probably can't see it because it's very tiny. So I need to change the font. And so I'll just make it big, and I'm going to change the size. I want to make it really big. Let me see if I can. Okay, 48 point. Okay, so there's the decal. Let me go back to that um, article. Okay, see so on this wrap, um, the apogee is down and it reads from the bottom to the top. So I'm going to rotate this around. And it didn't really, it wants to spin everything. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know how to use, ah, what a silly thing, isn't that? Hard to make a decal when it want, doesn't want to, nah. let's make a, a color decal. <laughs> Green, let me see. Um, I'm just trying to make an image. I'm just having this problem making a stupid image. Let me see if I can find an image. Let me open up my downloads again. I'm going to grab this one here and drag it into Illustrator. There we go. So now i got an image. Let me go back to this. Let me clear that out. Okay, now I'm going to paste an image. I pasted it right on top, and it's huge. So I got to, oops, I got to shrink it down. Um, I'm just, this is not Roxim, so I don't know how to use Illustrator like I know how to use Roxim. So that's why everything's going weird. Okay, so there's my image, and then I'm going to spin it around so it's upside down. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take this box, I'm going to get rid of the border. Okay, so now I don't have a border, and now I'm going to export it out. Um, let's see what we can export it out as. PNG, PNG will work. Uh, so I'm going to put it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it the decal. This is the hardest prop part of putting decals onto your design, is just creating the decal. So this is what it's going to look like, and that's exactly what I want it to look like. So I'll click OK. So now it's on my desktop. So now let's go back to Roxim right here. And I want to go to this texture. 
So I am on the body tube. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm editing the body tube. I'm going to go to texture. And now it's going to ask me to choose a file. So I'm going to go to my desktop. And here's my decal. I'm going to say OK. And now to see it, I need to be in 3D. So I'm going to go to this icon right here. And this gives me my different views. So I want to go to 3D. And if I look at it, I zoom in. See what it did? It wrapped it around. And, but it didn't wrap it quite all the way. And in fact, it wrapped it twice. Um, so, so, I'm gonna, so now you start playing with these buttons right here. So it says repeat pattern. I don't want to repeat the pattern. Okay, so there we go. So now it wrapped it just once around the outside of the rocket. So that is how we add a decal. And you can put it, those decals on any part. Um, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. See, now it says Roxim on it. You can read it right here. It says Roxim. So that is the process, Stu. Um, we'll just leave that on there. Oh, okay. Let's see if we get any other messages. Um, Reggie Morrow. Hello, Reggie. How are you doing? Is there a way to add motors that do not load during the simulation choice? Uh, Reggie that are not on the software list. So Reggie, are you saying that you have a custom made motor that you have yourself? Or uh, please define what you mean by not in the software list because our software right now is pretty extensive. Um, as, as of the last release, we pretty much have every NAR, Tripoli, Canadian Association of Rocketry motor that's listed along with the Klima motors from Germany. Um, so tell me, Reggie, exactly what motor that you're looking for. And I can answer that question. Brandon Neff asks, how does simulate base drag on a short stubby rocket like the Lock Mini Mag? <laughs> That's a good one, um, Brandon. Um, there's two ways of doing that one. And they're both not going to be um, easy. Um, the um, I was just reading Reggie's comment here. He was he was he just he was helping me along in, in the Illustrator. He says click once with the type tool to create outlines. I should have done that. I know how to create outlines, uh, but we already got the decal, so we don't have to do that. So going back to um, short stubby rockets, figuring out drag coefficient is always very hard. Um, so again, we're going to go back to the Apogee website because there's another newsletter article that describes a process that you can do one of the two ways. Um, so I'm going to type in the word uh, stubby, see if stubby comes up. Oh, there it is. No, that's stability of short stubby rockets. Um, and that's newsletter number 86. Let me open that up in a new tab, see if uh, that's the one I'm looking more for. Stability of short squat rockets. That's stability. We want drag. So that's not the one that I want to look for. Um, so let's type in the word short on the Apogee website. We have four matches, compact buffle, baffle. Uh, CPs of short and fat rockets and rock sim. That might be the one that I'm looking for, but that's also not drag. That's the center of pressure. But this is the article that I was thinking about because it was written by Bruce Levinson, um, who um, he he says to put a cone on the back end of your rocket to move the center of pressure further back. Uh, but this is not drag. This is center of pressure. You know, um, 
do I have a short rocket in Roxim? Um, and he says lock mini mag. Lock mini mag. And I think the lock mini mag is in Roxim. So if I go here to file open, and if I go to my applications folder, and I go to Roxim 10.2 F37, and inside of that is designs. Now, so this is all the current designs in Roxim. So if I go down to lock precision, open that. Now I'm looking for mini mag. Here's the mini mag. Um, save my changes. I'm going to lose my decal. That's okay. Um, okay, so here's a short squat rocket. Um, so figuring out the drag coefficient. Um, Roxim will try to estimate the drag. And if you come up here to the rocket menu and you go here to CD analysis and you click on that, um, this will bring up this chart. And this gives you drag coefficient by component. So he's looking for base drag, which is this one right here. Um, and base drag is, the, is going to be the blue line right here. And let me move the slider bar along here. Let me make this in miles per hour. So about, let me make it about 150 miles per hour, 150 miles an hour, which is typical for a model rocket. So it says that our base drag is 39% of the rocket drag, of the total drag. And that component adds 0 0.09646 as the coefficient of the base drag. So that's what Roxim's calculating. Now, I'm sure that didn't answer your question because if you had to ask the question, the question is that you don't think that Roxim is creating enough base drag. So what you're going to have to do then at that point if you don't trust that number, is to use CD override to override what Roxim calculates. So if I come up here to CD override and I click on that, and there's this button right up here that says calculate the CD at simulation time. So what we just saw when we went to the rocket menu and did CD analysis, that is what Roxim is calculating as the coefficient of drag. Um, so now if you want to override it, you have to do it right here. So CD of the sustainer stage alone, I need to first uncheck this button. And then we'll use a, a fixed value that includes your new base drag coefficient. And that's this. So uh, under the rocket CD analysis, what Roxim calculated... Uh, I need to check this button right here. Um, CD analysis. And if I go to 150 miles per hour, uh, that's feet per second. Miles per hour, 150 miles per hour. Um, it predicts the coefficient of drag for this rocket as 0.25. I would agree with uh, uh, Brandon that this is probably too low. So you would have to override it. Um, so let me run a quick simulation here and we'll see what happens. So it has a 38 millimeter motor mount. I'm going to choose a Cesaroni G115. Let me throw in a 13 second delay. Click OK. Let me just see what my uh, um, flight events are. It says deploy. At Apogee, which it really doesn't matter, I'm going to just change it to maximum ejection delay so that it will deploy at 13 seconds. Under simulation controls, I always leave that alone. Starting state, um, it's going straight up. And I'm going to change the launch guide to 98 inches, which is an 8 foot long launch rail. Hit tab there so it accepts the value. Launch conditions, this is the standard conditions that are default that I use. 700 feet above uh, sea level eight mile an hour wind and the temperature is about you know standard degree day which is you know 59 degrees i'm just going to click launch and it's going to launch this and, and it crashed uh, probably because our delay was too long 
Um, to, to, to verify that, we need to do a flight profile. So I'm just gonna make sure it's highlighted and then click the flight profile button and it reruns the simulation. Uh, puts the rocket right down here. And I can click launch. Rocket's taking off, it goes up. Um, we're at six seconds right now. And 11, 12, oh, we were just like that close from ejecting the parachute before it hits the ground. So we have verified that it was a long delay why it uh, crashed. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the rocket didn't go unstable. Um, so this is a really fat rocket. And if your icons are really small like these are, you can change that by going to the Rocket Design Attributes tab, clicking on that, and coming over here to Side View Marker Size and increasing that number. So I'm gonna increase it to 1.5 inches. Now you can see that my side markers are much bigger and I can see where that center of gravity is and the center of pressure. So this rocket is stable the way it is. Let me go back here to flight, flight simulations. Um, we have the G115. Um, our maximum altitude was 586 feet. Now that was run with Roxim calculating the coefficient of drag. Now, if you uncheck this, and now it's gonna use this value right here, 0.75. So whatever value of coefficient of drag that you come up with yourself, that's what it's gonna use. So then I'm gonna rerun that simulation. Also, I'm just gonna click run the simulation. So now it reran the simulation using a coefficient of drag of 0.75 rather than 0.25. And so by doing that, the rocket had a much lower altitude of 451 feet versus 586 feet. So now the next question is, well, how do I find that coefficient of drag? And this is where you're gonna to have to do some test flights using an altimeter. And the process is you're gonna to have to do what's called backtracking. So you're gonna you know, measure the altitude and then find out what coefficient of drag it took for the rocket to hit that altitude. So let's say our rocket went to um, 500 feet with this rocket motor. So we flew an altimeter, it came back that says the rocket went 500 feet. So now we need to adjust that coefficient of drag to get to 500 feet. So I'm gonna go back here to coefficient of drag. And I know it's gonna be a little bit lower than 0.75 because 0.75 only got us to 451 feet. 0.25 got us to well over 500 feet. I think it was 541. Um, just double check here. Oh, 586. So it's gonna be somewhere in between there. Um, so it's gonna be a back and forth process of figuring out that coefficient of drag. So let's type in 0.5 as my coefficient of drag and then rerun the simulation. Okay, so now, oh, I was real close. So, um, so, point, uh, so 507 feet at a coefficient of drag of 0.5 for this particular rocket. Um, if you wanna be a bit more accurate, we do have another newsletter article that describes this process uh, on our website. So again, go back to the newsletter page. So to again, to get to this particular page, you go to How To and Guides, you go to um, Peak of Flight Newsletter, click on that, and then you go over here to All Newsletters. And um, so now we're back on this page. We're gonna do a find. We're gonna only get a find on this particular page. So to do that, you do Control F or on a Macintosh, it's Command F. And it brings up this little search bar up here. And I'm gonna type in the word backtracking. Backtracking. Uh, nothing came up. Maybe it's two words. Nope. Uh, drag. So we're going to type in drag and there's 15 matches. So I have to go through all 15 of them, but it's, it's, it's better than 
going through 150 pages. Methods of adding drag, drag a tube, drag a notes, drag stability. How to determine drag coefficient of your rockets right here. So that's issue number 303. And if you read this one, it will tell you the process. And if you use an altimeter that has an accelerometer on board, besides just a barometric altimeter, you can get more data and you can get better data using an accelerometer. And this article explains how to backtrack that data in, in Roxanne. Okay, so that I hope answered your question. Um, let's see if Reggie has given me more information. Um, geez, I think it was the Aerotech H219-14A, but let me double check. And a K400C-14A. Okay, so um, let's go back to Roxanne. So Reggie is asking, how do you get a motor that's not loaded in Roxanne? Um, I think those motors are lo loaded because if they're Aerotech motors and they're NAR certified or Tripoli certified, they should be in the database because our database is pretty accurate at this point because we released an update um, in the last three months. Um, so I'm going to use this rocket as an example. So I'm going to load motors and he's looking for the H219. So um, I'm going to choose engines and I'm going into the database. And so the first thing I'm going to do is show on the uh, diameter filter, I'm going to say show all engines. So even though this is a 38 millimeter engine mount, it's going to show me all the engines in the database. Under manufacturer filter, I can show all. And under type filter, I'm going to also show all. And then um, by doing that, now it's put in all the motors. And if, if I scroll through them really fast, you can see there's a ton of them in there. There's, there's several hundred rocket motors in this database. So now it's just a matter of finding the H219. So let me scroll all the way back up to the top. Uh, I'm going to click on engine code. And I'm going to uh, click on it. What it does is it sorts the column by um, smallest to largest. Well, right now it's largest to smallest, so I'm going to click on it one more time. So now it's the smallest motor in the database, and it will go all the way to the largest, which was an O motor. So now I'm going to scroll down until I get to the H's. So I'm kind of going fast here. We're in the G's. Okay, so now we're starting the H's. So here's the last G. Here's the first H. So now we need to go to H219. So now one of the things you got to be watch out for, so because sometimes it will, um, well, let me see if I, I can show you an example. Anyway, so we're H. Oh, look at that. The H219 is not in there. So it's either it's not certified or it's a new motor or it's an old, old motor that was decertified. Okay, so okay, so we got a good question from Reggie because otherwise it should be showing up right here because um, H219 would be right there. Let's see if the K400 is in there. Now the K400C, I'm not familiar with what the C stands for. I'll scroll down to the Ks. Okay, so now we're down to the Ks. Okay, so here's an example of what I wanted to say before. Um, sometimes, so we're in the J's right here, and it, it should be sorting from smallest to largest, but if you notice right here, there's a J90W, which is actually a small motor. So what it's actually doing is it's sorting on that first number. So seven is smaller than nine, it doesn't see it as 760 versus 900. It just sees it's sorting by the number itself. So if you sometimes if you can't find the motor, uh, go down to the you know 
a little bit further down because it might be out of order because nine is greater than seven, even though 760 is smaller than, or, or 90 is smaller than 760. I'm getting confused myself. <laughs> So anyway, his other one was the K400C. So I'm going down to the K. See, here's a, here's another example. Here, the you know the K1185 is going to be bigger than the K400. So again, it's out of order. But if you know that little trick, okay. So here's a K400, but it's not an Aerotech K400C. Okay, so those motors aren't in there. So let's let's answer this question because it's a good question if, if you come across this situation. So first of all, we got to find the motor data file. Um, so I'm going to go to a website called thrustcurve.org. So it's www.thrustcurve.org and it pre-populated it for me. I'm going to click OK. Um, and this is done by John Coker. So a shout out to John Coker. His name is right down here. He does really good work on trying to keep track of all the motor files. So I'm going to type in um, the J or the H219. H219 up here in the search bar and hit return. And let's see what pops up. Oh, look at that. And it's certified on September 20, 2016. Ah, but look at this. It has a cert designation of H222. So I have no idea why the manufacturer has a name of 219. And it's certified as an H222. So let's go back to Roxham and see if the H222 is in there. So I'm going back to choose engine, and it's still sorted by, uh, oh, I need to show all engines. And let's sort it. And I'm scrolling down until I get the eight uh, H's. Oh, H222, H220. So it's still not there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going back to that website. Um, it shows it here, and it shows the thrust curve. We're going to need that. And it says it's got it either in Roxim or RAS format. And um, I'm going to click on the Roxim format. You, you could use either one of them in Roxim. Roxim can open RAS format. So, but uh, the Roxim format also stores other information. Um, so typically I like to use the Roxim format and it gives you what the file format looks like, but I want to download it. So it says data file download. So I'm going to download it and it downloaded onto my computer and it's, it's already downloaded. And I know exactly where it is it's in my download folder. So let me see if I can get the other one. So the other one was a K. Ah, K400. K400. K400C, single use. And let's click on that. And this one was also certified on September 20th. Same date, for some reason we're missing it. And this one has a cert designation of K409. Again, this is confusing. I have no idea why that is. I'm going to double check here in Roxanne to see if a K409 is in here. So I'm scrolling the down. Okay, so we got K404, K404, but there's no K409. So again, we're going to need that file. So I'm going back here to the website. Uh, go to the Roxin file and download that. Okay, so those are both downloaded. Now let's load them into Roxim. Uh, so there's, there's actually two ways to do it. What I'm just doing now is the hard way. <laughs> there's an easier way. Um, you don't have to manually download them from Thrust Curve if you know they're there. 
I was just trying to verify that they are on thrust curve. So let me cancel out of this, cancel out of that. Um, so I'm in Roxim, and if I go to File up here at the top, and I go to um, Import, and I'm going to choose Engine Files. Oh, this is, okay, this is the hard way. <laughs> because that's the way you would use if you've already uh, downloaded them. So I've already downloaded them. So let me go ahead and go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm going to go here to import engine files. So if you've already downloaded them, like I've already done, then it's just navigating to where those files are stored. So here they are in my download folder. And they're right here at the top, the K219 and the K400C. And if I would select both of those and click open, they would automatically be imported into our database. So, but I'm going to cancel out of that. But that's one way you can do it. So it says no engine files were imported. That's OK. So if I go to open uh, import database files, no, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that. Um, cancel out of you. Um, so if I go here, choose engine. I am missing something. What am I missing? Recommend motors. Oh, reload engine data. <laughs> That's the one I was looking for. Under the file menu, go to reload engine data. So this is if you want to just import them as fast as possible, go to reload engine data. And you're going to, it brings up this screen. And then you could, there's this button right here that says download engine data. Click on that. And now we can type in the designation right here of what we're looking for. So we're looking for an H219 and do a click on start search. It says nothing was matched. So what this did was it went out to thrustcurve.org to find if there was an engine there called an H219. Let's try the other one, uh, K400. Start search. Oh, I know what's going on here. <laughs> engine diameter. I don't know what engine diameter that is. Let's see if it's a 54. Um, it found 261 results with a 54 millimeter diameter, but no K400s. Um, let's see, what did it say? It was altered. Uh, this is taking a long time. I should have done it the other way. <laughs> um, what did it say? It was, it was, uh, K409. Let's try the K409. Start search. Nope. Didn't find any match on a K409 either. Okay, so I am out of luck on that, so we are gonna use the other way. The other way is if you'd manually downloaded them from thrustcurve.org, go to import engine files, um, go to where it, it downloaded them. For On my computer, it downloaded into the download folder, and I'm going to uh, download these two and click open, and it copied them into my data folder, click OK, and it brings up that same screen that we did before. Now here's the two motors, the, K, um, the K400C and the H219T. Um, I'm going to say add all. So it took those two motors and it took them from this side into this side. And so now they are in our database. So now there's the H219 and the K400C. Click OK. So now we should be able to find them. So if we go to Load Engines, choose the engines, and show all engines. 
and we're going to scroll down to the H219. Getting close, getting close. Um, I haven't seen H219. What did they call this one? It's the K400C, is it 409? H219 is called the CERT of the H222. So is that what I'm seeing, the H222? No, I'm not seeing it. Oh, here it is. Now it showed up. <laughs> it just took a second. So there's the H219. It is a 38 millimeter motor. Um, and I can do a 14 second delay. Click flight profile. So now we're launching it with the H219. So Reggie, that took a long time, but I hopefully, hopefully I answered your question. This is it's a 54. Um, let's see if the that uh, K400C is in there. So same process. Choose engine. Show all engines. Scrolling down to the K's. Uh, that was K400. K400C. There it is. So it is now in the database. Um, note to Michelle, we need to add those to, into the database. I don't know how those, those slipped through because those were uh, certified in 2016. And C stands for classic. Um, perfect, I understand. I work on a Mac too, good. I like the long way the best, <laughs> says Reggie. Okay, so that was, I think we've answered all the questions that have come through right now. Um, yeah, this is interesting. Michelle is replying on our Facebook account and says, uh, we will get them added to the database. They are not listed on the combined NAR CAR, which stands for Canadian Association of Rocketry and Tripoli Rocketry Association list for some reason. So that's how they slipped through, why they're not in the database, because somehow the NAR didn't put them on the list. And we get the, the list from the NAR. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll correct that in our next release. We are planning a next release. Um, we are working on it as we speak. Um, I can kind of show you maybe one of the features that, that is really cool. Um, it's not built into my Roxim, but it's built into my Roxim Pro. And so here's Roxim Pro. Um, this, this will be a feature that's shared between Roxim and Roxim Pro that I can, I can open, I can show you. Let me open up that same um, mini mag. Click open here. So here's the mini mag. So the new feature that I can kind of show you right now, kind of teasing this, is like, say you were down here on your 2D drawing and you wanted to define the component in the in the list here because like say for example like on this one right here this is like really bothers me because the person that created this file has two components that are named identical a ring and a ring so which ring is which ring on this rocket so what you can do with this new feature that's coming soon is you can click on it and it highlights it down here. So now you know that that ring is the forward ring. So if I go over here and I'm gonna change this to say forward ring, because that annoys me when people don't, you know, make the parts easy to understand. And if I click on this one, I expect it to be the one back here. And sure enough, it is. So that one is, I'm gonna open it and say aft ring and click OK. So now it's, it's listed as back. And it goes in the other direction as well. So if I come here to the um, 2D view, and if I click on a component, 
I can highlight the component down here and it will highlight it up here as well. So you can see you know, what comp component you're clicking on so you can click on them faster. Um, another feature that you can see down here is on the 2D view, we've also got um, some zoom buttons. Um, before, what you would have to do to zoom on this is you would right click on your mouse. And this is the way it currently is in Roxim 10.2 F37 is if you right click on it, it brings up this little context menu and you can say zoom in. So now you can zoom in and you can continue to do that. Zoom in and you can zoom in really far. Um, I'm going to zoom original. But now we also have the buttons here. Um, but you can also, in the new version, you can also use your scroll wheel. So you can just scroll in and out, find the, you know, to zoom in. So it's, it's a lot faster. Um, and in the 3D view, um, if I click on 3D, now notice that I have these fins highlighted. So if I click on 3D, and if I come here, you notice that the rest of the rocket is kind of translucent, but the fins are full solid because we've clicked on them. They're highlighted. So if I click on the launch lug up here, it highlights that launch lug. If I click on the nose, it highlights the nose. Um, and if I just want to get the rocket back to solid for the whole thing, um, I just click off of the rocket down here on the bottom. And now the whole rocket is solid again. But again, if I, if I want to highlight that body tube to find it in the list, I just click on it. I should be able to click on it. Click up here. There we go. Click on it down there. So that's a new feature that's coming. Um, and then also what we'll do, Reggie, is we'll put those motors in the database so that you don't have to download them from Thrust Curve. Uh, okay, so we started late. Uh, but we are near the top of the hour, and I know there's a lot of people that um, let me bring up my uh, camera with overlay. So we are giving away the Hermes poster. Oops, over here I got to be. We are giving away the Hermes Hermes poster. Um, we're going to. Last week we had a problem. Um, that we had so many people submit and it screwed up our feed so bad that we didn't know who to pick. So it's going to be the second person that uh, says, hello, Tim, as of right now. <laughs> so the last one that I have listed was Jay Edmondson. Um, so anybody that comes in after Jay, uh, the second person that says, hello, Tim, will get the free poster and we'll send this to you for free. And down on the bottom of the screen down here, there's a coupon code. And if you put in that coupon code, when you place an order for $10 or more from the Apogee website, anything that you order, it costs $10 or more, will also include the free Roxim Live number 19 sticker because this is the 19th episode. Um, and this coupon is good for six months. Um, so it's valid until uh, November 21, 21. <laughs> um, so I am looking for, ah, we got a winner. It's Stu McNabb is the winner. So Stu gets the, the poster. Um, we got a lot of people that have been putting in. Joe Noble, Jose Correa, Don Thomas, Wally uh, Furrer. I don't know how to say your last name, Wally. Uh, I'm pretty bad at that. Uh, Jay Edmondson, he asked a question. Uh, still interested in seeing how reducing a ringtail's length affects the margin of stability. We'll cover that one next time. Um, that's another one that you'll probably don't like the answer to, but <laughs> because it's uh, that's a hard question as well. Determining how stability of a ringtail affects the stability of the rocket. Uh, okay, so we are to the end of our episode here. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, let me switch here to the last scene. This has our web address down here in the bottom of the screen. 
Um, so if you're new to uh, rocketry or you're new to Apogee, you're watching this on our YouTube feed, um, that's where you come to our website to, you know, to get the software that we're showing here today um, or to get to our newsletters, um, to, you know, to get more information, to contact us. As you saw on our website, we have a contact form on the left-hand side of the screen. If you click on that, you'll get to you know, contact us really quick. We answer all the emails that come in. Um, there's our phone numbers there in case you want to talk to a real person. We don't have an answering machine pick up our phone except for after hours or if we're in a meeting. But 99% of the day or the week, we'll answer the phone and you'll be able to talk to a real person without having to go through voicemail. Because We all love voicemail, don't we? Uh, when you call other companies, that's what you get. You get voicemail. When you call Apogee, you get a real person because um, we want to talk to you um, because we know your time is important. You know, if you're going to call, obviously it's important to you. So we're going to answer the phone and talk to you with a real person. So it's time to end the, uh, the live stream. Um, so uh, next week, uh, Michelle will be here. I'm going to be at the National Sport Launch in Alamosa, Colorado. That's on the Memorial Day weekend of 2021. Um, but Michelle will be here to answer your questions. Maybe she won't. Uh, maybe I'll have to do a, a pre-recorded message for Jay about uh, margin of stability with ringtails. <sighs> That's going to be a good one. I'll have to figure out what I'm going to say because it's not a good answer. <laughs> uh, okay, so. We're going to end this video in five, four, three, two, one. Go out and launch something. <laughs>